Hello students, welcome back. Myself Pushpendra Singh and uh, we are going to start with our daily current affairs. So these classes are basically meant for those students who are preparing for the civil services examination conducted by the UPSC as well as other government competitive examinations. As you know that there are many questions which are asked right by the UPSC from the current affairs portion. So for that, you must read the daily national newspaper, any national newspaper. Okay, you can read the Hindu or Indian Express. Both of these newspapers are equally good. Okay, you can supplement your preparation with the help of these lectures. So these lectures are also based on the current affairs. You can subscribe our channel on the YouTube. Okay, and you will get the daily current affairs related classes on the YouTube on the day to day basis. All right, so let's begin with the lecture, which is being related to the current affairs. All right, so today 13th of March 2021. Okay, so the first news is flashing regarding the Dandi March, okay, which was held in 1930s. Okay, so the Gandhi took, you know, 24 day long march from the Savarmati to Dandi right which is a coastal area in the gujarat okay so gandhi's ashram is located at the sabarmati so from sabarmati to dandi okay the march was carried out by the gandhi mahatma gandhi and, and his followers so on the occasion of the 91st anniversary of this historic march which was also known as the salt march by the mahatma gandhi and their followers why it is called salt march because the gandhi was leading you know this march to break some salt monopoly which was there with the british okay so to have the tax resistance campaign against such salt monopoly which was imposed by the britain or by the british okay so this march was led by mahatma gandhi from sabarmati ashram to the dandi in gujarat Recently, the Prime Minister Narin Modi flagged off the symbolic same 386 kilometers long Dandi march from the same route, which was taken by Mahatma Gandhi and his followers. So the original Gandhi march, Dandi march, which was 24 day long march from the, you know, from March 12, that was starting date and that ended on April 5. That means the starting days of March or uh, that march is basically from March 12. And that possession reaches to the Dandi at the Gujarat coast, right, on April 5, 1930. It was nothing but a tax resistance towards the British salt monopoly. Okay. Now, this Dandi march also, right, marked the inauguration of the civil disobedient movement, which was also started at that point of the time. Okay. As soon as the Gandhi and his followers reaches the, you know, Dandi on April 5, what happens is, right he broke the salt law that means on the early morning he proceeded right along with other you know the people to the sea and where he took you know a lumps of the natural salt which was there right which was lying in the pit and he basically broke that law or the salt monopoly which was there with the britain okay and then after completing this dandi march right in the next month the Gandhi also proceed to the Darshana salt work, okay, where also he is supposed to break this salt monopoly, okay, but he was arrested, right, and he was taken to the Yervada Central Jail, right, thereafter, okay, and this Darshana salt work related, you know, the salt monopoly breakage was done by some other person, okay, so this is uh, the picture you can see the Gandhi, who is basically the leading this march from the Sabarmati Ashram to the, to the Dandi, Okay, now this is a symbolic, you know, uh, sign basically for 2021. Same Gandhi, but you know, uh, with having you know the march which is symbolized to the petrol pump because nowadays the petrol prices have gone up. Okay, just in figure which shows that the march is not related to the salt monopoly, but it is related to the monopolistic pricing which is there with respect to the you know, the petrol, uh, you know, uh, the prices. Okay. Next, the state election commission or state election commissioner. Okay. What is happening is that constitution recognize that, you know, the state election commissioner 
or a state election commission should be there so it is a it is a constitutional body so state election commission is a constitutional body okay the state election commission consisting of the state election commissioner okay as well as other staff now the idea of creation of the state election commission is to look after the elections related procedure right at you know at the local level that means at the panchayati level at the municipal level so the so the main task of the state election commissioner to look after the election related work of the local bodies specifically on the local bodies okay the local body may be panchayat or district panchayat or it may be municipal council or municipal corporation okay now what is happening is that recently the goa government has appointed the law secretary that means an ias officer right as the as the state election commissioner so what is happening is that the law secretary of the goa have been given the additional charge of the state election commissioner now this incident took to the supreme court of india now the supreme court held that the independent persons should only be appointed as the state election commissioner right it sh they should not be bureaucrats right they should not be bureaucrats or they should not be you know the running bureaucrats who are already in the service should not be given the additional charge or should not be appointed as a state election commissioner okay so the supreme court held that only independent person that means after retirement you can provide okay that opportunities but not you know the current law secretary which is been appointed or which have been given the additional charge of state election commissioner should not be done okay now it says that the giving government employees that means law secretary is also government employee the additional charge of state election commissioner is a mockery to the constitution that means the government of goa is doing the mockery to the constitution by giving right uh, a sitting bureaucrat a additional charge of the state election commission the state election commissioner commissioner is basically a constitutional post okay now the top court or the supreme court of india has also directed the state that only the independent persons should only be appointed as a election commissioners right all along the length and the breadth of the country that means it will be applicable throughout the country okay the judgment also criticized the goa government's move right for appointment of the law secretary right as the state election commissioner okay which is also criticized by the supreme court of india now the article which governed with the state election commission is basically article 243k okay the article 243k basically deals with the elections to the panchayat okay now the the state election commission commission is is basically constituted okay now state election commission's role is to superintendence direction and the control of the electoral rolls or preparation of the electoral rolls for the conduct of the elections of the panchayat right and uh, it shall be vested this power shall be vested with the elect state election commission okay now this state election commission would also consist of the state election commissioner okay the state election commissioner should be appointed by the governor okay now the idea is that it is appointed by the governor but he cannot be removed from his office right uh, in in whims and the fancies of the governor that means once been appointed as a state election commissioner okay he can only be removed in the same manner in the same manner and on the same ground as the judge of the high court can be removed that means that means the state election commissioner should is not holding the post during the pleasure of the governor he can only be removed in the same manner and on the same ground just like a judge of the high court can be removed okay now subjected to provisions of any law made by the state legislature right the conditions of the service regarding the state regarding the state election commissioner and the tenure of the office of the state election commissioner would be you know such that that uh, that may decide by the rule okay and uh, the state election commissioner cannot be removed on his office okay based on the discretion of the governor okay he can only be removed only when you know only in the same manner and on same ground right the judge like the judge of the high court can be removed 
okay and once been appointed to the post of election state election commissioner okay his conditions of the service right and uh, right and all all other conditions which have been already you know uh, explained to him or already given to him shall not be varied to the disadvantage after his appointment okay that is for making the security of the tenure as well as to maintain the independence of the office of the state election commissioner okay so he is the law secretary who has been given the additional charge of the state election commissioner of goa okay next mera ration mobile app okay now as you know that you have in india specifically you have you know uh, the laborers who generally move from place to place okay so you have migrant laborers okay who move from one state to another state right from one place to another place in search of employment opportunities now they are also poor okay they are also marginal they don't have the enough resources to feed their own family okay so the government is providing you know basically under national food security act certain you know benefits regarding to you know the ration or the food grains which will be provided to such people okay under national food security act now since they are continuously in the move in search of the employment now they are facing difficulty in terms of getting this ration from the ration shops okay now to remove such problem the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution have launched an app which is an mobile app which is known as the mera ration mobile app okay now this will be giving benefit to those ration card holders who move to the new places in search of the livelihood right generally they are migrant laborers okay at present there are 32 states and the union territories have been integrated with this mera ration mobile app okay under one nation one ration card that means now you have given the option of portability okay now under one nation one ration card scheme or right uh, the migrant labor can basically get the benefit from any other state also okay and uh, the remaining states and the union territories will be expected to be covered in the next few months under this one nation one ration card scheme okay at present the system covers nearly 69 crore beneficiaries of the national food security act okay in our country and uh, as this one nation one ration card scheme is been implemented by the department of food and public distribution which comes under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution for providing the nation wide portability of the ration cards that means you can use the same ration card okay anywhere in another state if they are if you are the move in search of the livelihood under the national food security act okay next the azadi ka amrit mahotsav india act 75 okay this is the website so as you know that the government of india has decided to celebrate or to commemorate the 75 years of the completion of the independence okay so in that occasion the prime minister narendra modi flagged off a padyatra or the freedom march right that the first news which was i was telling about in the occasion of the dandi march right so this padyatra was basically flagged off by the prime minister narendra modi from the sabarmati ashram and that basically took the same path okay would reach to the dandi okay it will cover you know with the same same tracks right and uh, you know the prime minister narendra modi also inaugurated the certain razor activities of the azadi ka amrut mahotsav at the india act 75 okay now this launch of azadi ka amrut mahotsav is a 75 weeks before the 15th august 2022 okay now as this is a 75 weeks earlier than the 15th august of 2022 which will be covering your 75 years this azadi ka amrut mahotsav would continue right till the 15th of august 2023 all right and the prime minister reiterated that five pillars related to the azadi ka amrit mahotsav okay which will be based on the freedom struggle the ideas at 75 okay achievements at 75 actions at 75 okay these are the five pillars 
and the resolve at 575 okay these are the five pillars right of the azadi ka amrit mahotsav as a guiding force for moving forward keeping the dreams and the duties as the inspiration right to all the people of our country okay the prime minister also launched the website okay which you can access the india at 75 on this occasion okay and uh, you know the prime minister narendra modi also launched the atmanirbhar incubator program okay this atmanirbhar incubator program is basically related to or is basically belongs to the ministry of culture right in partnership with the savarmati ashram preservation and the memorial trust okay the idea of launching this atmanirbhar incubator program of the ministry of culture is to preserve those arts those skills specifically of the craft persons or the artisans right which are at the verge of extinction so in order to preserve those arts and the skills which are at the verge of extinction right the atmanirbhar incubator program of the ministry of culture was also launched by the honorable prime minister of our country mr narendra modi okay and a chakra was also installed near the mega nivas at the sabarmati ashram okay this chakra would rotate a one complete circle right with each tweet which is related to the atmanirbhar bharat right it's a symbolic move so you can see the azadi ka amrit mahotsav the freedom march which was flagged off by prime minister narendra modi is a starting point it reaches through this way okay and ultimately reaching to dandi okay it will be covering 390 kilometers long dandi route okay next the lgbt iq freedom zone what is lgbt iq lgbt iq means the lesbian g means gay b means bisexual t means trans okay non binary i means intersex and q means queer okay now what is happening is that the european union which is a block of 27 member countries okay now the european union have declared or european parliament have declared that the european union will have the lgbt iq freedom zone right it is basically an acronym for the lesbian gay bisexual trans non binary intersex and your queer okay so this lgbt iq freedom zone right will be right will be uh, you know throughout the 27 member countries of the european union as declared by the european parliament okay now by this declaration of the european parliament okay the lgbt iq persons right whoever the person identified themselves as a the lgbt iq they will have right all freedoms to live right they can publicly show their orientation or sexual orientation right their gender identity okay to the people openly and they should not be having any fear of intolerance intolerance okay discrimination of persecution that means without any discrimination intolerance or persecution right the people belongs to lgbt iq community they are they are they can show all their sexual orientation freely and openly gender identity and they can live you know with freedom right in the in the in the basically european bloc or in the european union which consisting of the 27 member countries okay now recently what happens is the poland and the hungary these both countries are basically creating you know some of you know the lgbt iq ideology free zones that means the poland and the hungary both are these countries are basically opposing this lgbt iq freedom zone that means they do not recognize this their ideology that means the move of the european parliament came after the poland's controversial move right which is been related to right the declaration of the polo poland of 100 igbt lgbt iq ideology free zones that means the poland has has created the I lgbt iq ideology free zones around the country okay to stop such promotion of iq related aspects 
okay which is against the backsliding of lgbtiq rights in some of the european union country particularly in the poland and the hungary okay but this resolution which was passed in the european parliament is basically the majority of the european union country 23 supported this move out of 27 countries okay recognize the same sex unions that means the between male and male female and female okay that is gay and uh, you know lesbians and 16 of such countries have legally recognizing the same sex marriage okay and the poland is one country which is a small right which do not recognize such relationship between male and male and female and female right the poland and the hungary both are pushing for the conservative catholic socialistic agenda okay of not promoting the lgbt iq related you know rights and uh, in november 2020 right the nagyata town have adopted a resolution banning completely the dissemination and the promotion of the lgbt propaganda in that town so this is basically happening in the poland and the hungary which is basically not promoting such propaganda in the country okay so it is the map you can see the political map the poland the neighboring is germany czech republic okay slovakia ukraine belarus lithuania russia and to the northwest north northwestern portion you have the baltic sea also okay next 2001 f032 what is that it is basically you know an asteroid it is an asteroid of apollo group it has been named as 2001 f032 okay f432 why it is this asteroid is you know uh, significant to the india or significant to the world or significant to the earth because on march 21st this asteroid is going to pass by the earth in 2021 itself that means on march 21 2021 this asteroid is going to pass by the earth and it will be the closest right to the earth right and it is the near earth asteroid which is classified as potentially hazardous it has been classified as a potentially hazardous because it will be you know passing the by earth basically with very close distance and this asteroid is of apollo group now regarding the size of this asteroid the diameter of the asteroid is around 440 to 680 meters that means around 400 1400 feet to 2200 feet and it was discovered by the lincoln near earth asteroid research at the socorro in new mexico in 23 march 2001 okay now this asteroid will safely pass by the earth on 21st of march 2021 now uh, it will pass by the earth but it is still closer to the earth in the astronomical terms right it is around 2 million kilometers away from the earth when it will pass by the earth this 2 million kilometers you know is in the astronomical terms is very minuscule or very you know short so for that purpose it has been declared as a potentially hazardous asteroid okay and which have been designed by you know 2001 fo32 which is been designed as a potentially hazardous asteroid so you can see this is a picture of the earth and it is a symbolic you know the f 2001 fo32 which is an asteroid which will pass by the earth on 21st of march 2001 okay next the mobile integrated network terminal systems that is mint systems what is that so it is basically you know it is basically a uh, a uh, you know a portable uh, communication system okay which will be having the you know satellite or wireless accessing system which will support the voice video and the data that means the indian armed forces can basically utilize that system okay or communication system right uh, with the help of the satellite and the wireless systems okay and that will basically help in in terms of the communication through voice video or data so indian army is going to have the procuring of this mobile integrated network terminal system that is mint system under 
the make second category of dap that is defense acquisition that is defense acquisition procedure okay which was implemented by the ministry of defense in 2020 okay now this system is envisaged as a lightweight portable and a state of art since it is been uh, made under the category make two category of defense acquisition procedure so it will provide the satellite backhaul and the wireless access systems for various supports like voice video and the data okay now you know various response have been submitted by the indian industry right and a total of 11 firms have been issued with the project sanction order on the 12th march 2021 for the development of the prototype of the mobile integrated network terminal systems okay now this contract was subsequently placed with one of the indian firm right after it has been successfully developed the prototype okay now this prototype which was developed under the as per the provisions of by indian iddm of dap that is you know the indian designed okay developed and manufactured category of the defense acquisition procedure okay defense acquisition procedure so it has been developed under the by indian designed developed and manufactured category of defense acquisition procedure okay the development of this mint system will enhance definitely the operational capacity or capability of the indian armed forces okay so it is one such prototype which was developed okay next the brics contact group on economic and the trade issues that is cgei cgei so the brics basically an acronym which is basically used for brazil russia india china and south africa okay so these five countries have made this acronym that is brics so now the brics contact group on economic and the trade issues which leads their first meeting obviously which is related to the economic and the trade related issues have the first meeting okay that first meeting was basically held between 9th to 11th march 2021 okay now this meeting have the special significance because india is chairing this meeting okay so the theme of this year meeting is brics at 15 that is india brics or that is intra brics brics cooperation for continuity consolidation and consensus the most important aspect is india is basically the having the chair of this the brics contact group on economic and the trade issues okay so india has presented right the calendar of the events for the brics cgeit 2021 okay the important deliverables related to this you know uh, the the meetings of the contact group is basically the first is basically you know uh, the cooperation on the multilateral trading system which is basically related to the world trade organization so all you know about trips so trips is basically the trade related intellectual property rights right that is trips okay so the trips waiver proposal at the world trade organization okay the the second is the framework for the consumer protection in the e-commerce then the non tariff measures right resolution mechanism and the last is sanitary and phytosanitary measures right the deliverables or the discussions will be based on these issues okay so the brics india 2021 because india is chairing the meeting okay next the aya bakunda swamikal okay he is basically you know belongs to kerala he was one of the social revolutionary okay he was a great teacher right and uh, he was also you know uh, a miracle worker so the prime minister narendra modi paid his respect to the aya bakunda swamikal who is basically a thinker and the social reformer of the 19th century on his birth anniversary right 
he was also pioneer of the social revolutionaries of south india and the kerala okay and uh, the researchers basically you know design or you know uh, regard the aya bakunda swamikal as you know as a great teacher as a healer and the miracle worker okay and his teachings basically changed various aspect in the society so the various social changes social upliftment social reform have been taken place specifically in the southern india okay which resulted into the development of or emergence of you know so the series of the social movement self respect movement in the southern india for example the upper cloth agitation which was started with the effort of the you know the guru and the temple entry agitation as well as the other movements including the narayana guru the chattampi swamikal belalar and ayyankali was also influenced because of him okay so he is basically the guru okay next the meningitis okay all you know the meningitis is basically a medical disease okay the world health assembly endorses first ever resolution on the meningitis related to its prevention and control it is a disease which is been caused by you know different pathogens these pathogens may be bacteria virus or fungi okay so the meningitis is a basically serious infection of the meninges which is basically a membrane which covers the brain and the spinal cord so it is when the infection occurs to this membrane which is covering your brain and the spinal cord right that disease is known as meningitis now this is caused because of different pathogens okay that include your bacteria virus and fungi but most of the cases load related to the meningitis is seen through the bacterial infection so that means it is known as the bacterial meningitis okay now several different kind of bacteria causes the meningitis for example you have the streptococcus pneumoniae then haemophilus influenzae the neisseria meningitis is the most frequent ones and meningitis causes you know the meningococcal meningitis is one of the potential to produce large epidemics in the countries okay specifically in the african countries the meningitis causes the epidemics also okay regarding this bacteria who causes this meningitis this can be transmitted from the people to people or from the person to person that means the bacteria which causes this meningitis can be transmitted from the person to person okay this person to person transmission occurs through the droplets of the respiratory secretions okay or the throat secretions that means if the two persons are in contact with in terms of these droplets which comes out either respiratory tracts or the throat secretions as a carriers right such bacteria can be transmitted and which can also cause the epidemics and one such example can be found in the in the african countries where the epidemics has also also been occurred okay so despite of various efforts to control this meningitis in the different different regions the meningitis continue to have the major global public health issue right which is causing right around 5 million cases every year so around 5 million cases every year still occur related to your meningitis okay the meningitis belt in the africa is the most vulnerable right to the recurrent outbreaks related to the epidemics related to the meningitis which kills the people of all ages in almost all countries in the africa okay now to defeat the meningitis right i'm um, def defeating meningitis road map addresses all type of meningitis regardless of the cause okay particularly you know uh, the main causes of the acute bacterial meningitis that is meningo meningococcus pneumococcus and haemophilus influenza and group b streptococcus okay so these are some of the meningitis which is caused by the bacteria okay so for for the for, for purpose of you know the defeating of the bacterial meningitis a defeating meningitis road map is basically address all such issues okay the symptoms of the meningitis you can see here in your uh, the brain you will have the headache or the mental status will also be altered right you will feel the phonophobia okay 
then in your muscle in your muscles you will feel fatigue or severe, severe muscle pain the eye is basically having you know dislike related to the bright lights okay lights then uh, you you may have the high fever seizures you know the stiff neck sleep the sleepiness or the difficulty in the waking okay in the stomach you may feel vomiting or the nausea in the skin you may have the paleness or the spot on or some some sort of a rash on your body on your skin right you may have the blotchy also okay so these are some of the symptoms related to the bacterial meningitis all right so that's all for the today we will meet again tomorrow for our uh, the next current affairs so thank you very much for, for those who attended this class thank you